Okay, welcome to Denby Dale Amateur Radio Club and uh, welcome to our members and welcome to visitors to the club uh, that are always welcome to join our meetings. We've made a point from when we first started our meetings here on Zoom over a year ago now in our first lockdown in the UK that we would throw our meetings open to any amateurs that were interested in attending and uh, we've had a number of you that have done that in the last year and joined us because uh, they've enjoyed the club and our meetings and we're going to carry on doing that. So welcome to everyone to tonight's meeting. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Mike Walker, a VA3MW, uh, to the meeting tonight. Um, I know Mike, and you can tell us all about this, is, is professionally involved with Flex Radio, but who better to give us a talk on Flex Radio? I know we've got at least one member of the club that does use a Flex Radio, um, and I think um, it would be very interesting for all of us just to, to have a look at that and, and get a a grasp of what we can and can't do with the uh, flex radio type setup. So Mike, over to you. Uh, thanks, Nick, for having me and everybody can copy me. Okay. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, I've uh, and I've got screen share. Thanks, Nick. So I'm ready to go. I'll bring that up in a second. And uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, currently work for flex radio. Uh, although wasn't my uh, career, my career was in the IT information uh, protection and backup world uh, for quite a long time. And I started my career as a being hired by IBM to work in, in NORAD on a computer that was built in 1957 and had uh, about 64,000 valves in it and real core memory and 6146Ws were our memory tube. So all the hams in the little town of North Bay, which is 50,000 people, all had fresh tubes all the time for their HF radio. So it was a great uh, career. So yes, I've walked inside a computer and gone debugging, looking for missing bits and pieces. So uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit just, I'm just touching on the surface of what uh, a flex radio can do and some of the cool things. Uh, it uh, It's two parts radio, it's two parts radio. There are, the radio is designed for all types of operators. If I just want to turn it on and use it, I can turn it on and use it. If I turn it on and want to make it do and dance and talk to weird things or build uh, different modulation modes, it can do that too. Uh, and it's designed to, uh, to uh, allow people to expand their skills as well. And like any HF radio or any radio out there, there is no perfect radio. We're just one of many choices that people have. So we will hit the screen share button and then Zoom decides that I don't have enough real estate. So bear with me for a second because I would like to get you guys back to the way I had you. And you can see the main slide in my presentation. Okay. And the one thing I can't see in a presentation is the chat window. So Nick, if there's any questions, feel free to speak up or, uh, or, or, uh, or whatever it takes. So, uh, so that without any ado, I do have a hard stop at the bottom of the next hour. I've got a YouTube video, the sort of triple book today. So we'll, uh, I'll try to breeze through it, but hopefully leave enough time for questions. So what is an SDR radio? Uh, we use the term like a Band-Aid, but an SDR radio is actually, SDR is a manufacturing term. It's a technology term. It's how we build the radios. And in the early days, we started with uh, well, we started with spark gap, and then after that, we got into uh, tubes and semiconductors and, ch and chokes and capacitors and resistors. And anytime we wanted to do something with RF, we had to down mix it and then rectify it, and eventually we got audio. But in today's world, the software defined is just a manufacturing process. And I guarantee all of you already own an SDR radio, unless you don't own a cell phone, because your cell phone is an SDR radio. And they often get updated to uh, do different modulation technologies or whatever. And we do this just by changing the software in the radio. And we can even do that with flex radios moving into the future, the radio being somewhat future proof. If we were ever to come up with a new modulation scheme for HF, you wouldn't have to buy a new radio. You would just change the software. So. This is what makes it so cool is that you can get a black box like your computer. You just keep updating it. Anybody been on HF long enough to own all uh, ICOM 756 Pro Series? 
or at least yeah so terry you have right bought the new one loved it came out with the pro 2 what'd you do sold the new uh, the the pro for a loss bought the new one at full price and then you did it again for the pro 3 and they were all great radios right they either fixed something or uh you know came up with some new features they inst you know came up with the color screen and yes guilty did the same thing well when we in today's world we're now getting to the point where it's part of the it's part of the business model to build a radio a platform that continually be updated and that's exactly what we've tried to do even the uh, the flex 6300 which came out in 2013 is still a very current radio and you could still buy the new whatever latest greatest software is available for it at very minimal prices it's 200 dollars us uh in our flex radio world i'll talk about this in a minute we have slices instead of receivers it's just a term that's the same thing uh, we have full function transmitters which are shared among slices not like other hf radios where you have a main receiver and a little tiny sub receiver we have actually all unique receivers and we share the transmitter it's a different concept if you want to get on 2200 meters or 630 meters we can do it you just have to build your own amplifier or buy your own amplifier to get from 10 you know about 10 milliwatts output to whatever power you need because that's available right on the back of the radio or even eight meters for example that's already available today you do need an amplifier we're just there at transverter drive power unlimited rs-232 or cat serial ports and if you've ever fought with cat or serial ports on your computer with your current hf radio you'll understand what that means and digital audio exchange uh, also uh, included that's how we change trade the audio around between what we want to get out of the radio for maybe our digital programs again more on that later and a bit of a history of flex radio uh, they're all built and designed in the u.s all the manufacturings in the u.s all the engineering all the support and customer services in North America. Of course, I'm the foreigner uh, in uh, everybody else. Uh, and we also have a repair center in Germany as well. Uh, in North America, this is different probably in the UK, but we do offer a 30 day return policy. So uh, not always the same thing in every other country, but the radios all do have a two year warranty. And uh, believe it or not, that was most of the staff about four years ago at Dayton. We all have this great smile on our face. The funny thing is, uh, and and these are great people. Eric from Elecraft took the picture for us as he walked by the booth of us at Dayton. So uh, wonderful gentleman, uh, took it all in good fun. And we were just sort of laughing and he grabbed this awesome picture of us. But now Flex Radio is almost 50 employees uh, instead of the 14 or 15 we were then. We continue to grow and expand and even into different markets that being other military markets, not only in the US, but worldwide. So a few new terms, a slice I mentioned is a receiver and you can have a slice opened anywhere on the spectrum. You can have a different, a second slice open anywhere else in the spectrum because all radios come with at least two virtual, two slices or receivers. Some of them come with as many as eight. And because the software defined radio we use today, the Flux radio actually uh monitors or processes the entire hf spectrum from 30 kilohertz to 54 megahertz that allows you to be doing two things at once if you wanted to do that before you'd have to have two different radios and you only ever talked on one radio at a time so again no different and uh, you could be on multiple different modes i can open up three slices on six meters if you're a six meter operator because i've been on six meter ft8 six meter ft4 msk 144 for meteor scatter and maybe watching uh 50.125 or 50.100 for uh, uh six meter band openings over the pond and to put this in perspective no pun intended your eyes are a spectral capture unit we receive all wavelengths uh, all different wavelengths in our brain, which is, uh, I'll talk about the field programmable gate array, which is the horsepower behind it. The brain is our FPGA. And the spectral, by the way, some radios have one spectral capture unit, some have two. If a radio you're interested in has two, it means you can use two different antennas at the same time. Why would I wanna do that? Well, I may wanna be on 20 meters and six meters at the same time, and they're two different antennas, two different feed lines. Uh, we really don't care. 
A few other terms. I talked about the field programmable gate array. That's where we do all the programming. Uh, you don't need to worry about it, but our programmers do. And that's where all the software resides that crunches all this data that we've received from the antenna and ultimately turns it into audio so that we can either hear it or decode it for a digital program. The client is the part that you and I use to interface with the radio. Uh, CAT and DAX I talked about, they're the computer interfaces for uh, my logging program or WSJT or FL Digi or N1MM that need to communicate with the radio to either put it into transmit or to receive what frequency or mode it's operating on or some other change. And DAX is the way we send the audio that we hear uh, to the radio, uh, you know, for WSJT to and from the computer. And these are helper programs that come with the product. Hang on a sec. So we talked about the spectral capture unit. That's the unit that receives all the energy from your antenna and turns it into binary data. And the binary data is what the FPGA or the computer needs to deal with. And as I mentioned, some radios come with one and some come with two. And the field programmable gate array, the, your brain, is the part we change all the software in. And each spectral capture unit has one field programmable gate array. Now pay attention, there'll be a test later. And I'm only kidding. So it'd probably be the last time you need to know about these terms. The receiver slice is a receiver. Much like any radio we use today, it may have one receiver or two. Uh, FM mobiles often have two uh, dual bands. Some dual band radios only have one receiver and you either have to be on VHF or UHF. Other dual band radios have two receivers so that you can be listening to both VHF and UHF at the same time. And you're not limited to being all in the same area. You can be anywhere in the HF radio spectrum receiving. I could be on 160 meters listening to a signal on 160 and 20 meters at the same time. Uh, and I may be able to use two different antennas or may have to share a common antenna, again, depending how many spectral capture units you have. On. And then the clients. We have multiple clients that connect to the radio. We have Smart SDR for Windows, which is runs on a PC. We have Smart SDR for Mac, which runs on a Mac, if you're a Mac user. We have Dog Park SDR, which runs on a Mac as well. Different author. The Mac stuff is is written by uh, customer, not customers, but developers of ours. Or we don't make any money on it. They write and sell their own product. And the same thing for Smart SDR for iOS. That'll run on your cell phone or a uh, iPad or iPad Pro or whatever you like. And then lastly from us is the Maestro. I'll show a picture of a Maestro, but that's a if you've been a lo around long enough, remember a FM days of control heads when the radio was in the trunk and the and the control panel was up front, or even something like an ICOM seventy one hundred. The Maestro is a control head for the radio. It can be on the desk beside the radio. It could be the radio could be underneath your desk and the Maestro on top. The the radio could be in another room, or the radio could even be half a world away. We really don't care. This is what Smart SDR for Windows looks like. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of screenshots of magazines and such with it. All the controls we use to uh, to talk to the radio are there, just like any other radio you've used today. Uh, just, uh, I think, a little better organized. And I'd like to pick on Yesu's FTDX5000 that had, I could lost count at 112 buttons on the front panel alone and each button had multiple levels of shift, right? So you can, most of them you can touch one for function or press and hold, or you get the idea. So we like to make it a little simpler. Now I'm gonna show this video of a, a very powerful tool we have in our radio called the Wide Noise Blanker. The Wide Noise Blanker is very good at power line noise, repetitive power line noise, and it monitors an entire spectrum about one megahertz wide from your VFO and then is able to remove that noise. Now I recorded this on 80 meters uh, about a year ago and it's a net, but what I want you to pay attention to is the noise when coming, coming and going away. And the big green horizontal bars are a lot of energy and that's the noise energy and it's actually hiding the signal we wanna see. And the green vertical bars are a conversation or a QSO 
with the blue being the noise background. So you can see where the noise being very high that uh, we can't even see the conversation because it's obliterated. So here we go. WB2KAO here, good morning, Barry. And now, WB2KAO, we can barely hear. Uh, let me turn the blanker back on. Yeah, so good, Barry. Just got off the bike, and I thought, well, let me, uh, let me check in with you here for a minute before I uh, go up and get in the shower. We got, uh, we got quite a bit of So, which would you want to listen to? Does it work on all noise? No. No noise blanker works on all noise, but it does work on different types of noise. And this does this every time it plays. Now, here's a second thing, a uh, video I have. Uh, this is, we don't have an RF gain. Our SDR radios really do not have an RF gain control. But they do have a an area of the sweet spot that the that the um, SCU operates at, and uh, so we have a variable knob on how to adjust that gain. Uh, we don't actually ever have an SDR overload issue, much like uh, some other radios do. But the way we do, it's totally different science. Uh, it works incredibly well, and in fact, SDR radios work better with the most more signals they receive and. Gerald Youngblood has a presentation on that on YouTube you can find called Debunking the Myths of an SDR Radio. But in this case, uh, here near Toronto where I live, there was a big lightning storm going on. And again, the horizontal bars are noise. And then it's about every 10 seconds we're seeing a or hearing a lightning strike. If you've ever operated HF radio in lightning, uh, you know how many you see the, you lose part of the conversation, right? As the noise goes, as the lightning strike being so powerful, causes the preamps to turn off and back on in your radio. And this is called the automatic gain control. Well, we do it differently. We have a fast attack AGC. And you're going to hear how this sounds. And uh, I apologize a bit for the conversation. Not that there's anything wrong, but it's a pretty heavy conversation about an accident that happened. And uh, it's a net that I normally listen to. I didn't really realize that Chad and uh, the gentleman in Rochester, New York, were talking about this until after I almost recorded the video. So uh, anyway, the point is, listen to the difference of the noise and how it's handled. See it, I'm about here. In fact, I'm right there. That little green dot is my uh, lightning map receiver. And here's the storm uh, right over uh, Lake Huron coming into Georgian Bay. And you can see a bit of stuff going on here. So we'll get rid of that. So let's turn on the audio and I want you to just listen to what we're hearing here. Okay. My AGCT for 80 meters, let's see, is way too high. Let me turn off my audio. Or we'll turn this down. If I adjust my AGCT just down, you'll notice it gets really quiet. But you go, I'm not going to be able to hear anything. Let me turn this. No, I'm going to turn this level up to a normal level. And we, we hear that click. And that's the fast attacks dual AGC. Click on, click off. I'm at medium, by the way, not at fast, not at slow. So how does that translate if you want to listen to a couple of guys? There's a net here on 3755. 1718. Anyway, the one went into the silo, uh, died from the gas. The other one went into, uh, seen his brother uh, um, floundering there, went in and he died too. So you'll notice we can hear, that's my buddy Chad, speaking, um, just rag chewing about whatever. And... Plain as day, sort of like the winter on a quiet day. Yeah, it's not perfect, but man, it's easy to listen to. A similar story. Uh, silos are nothing to mess with. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people put signs on the door, especially up high, not to get in there. And uh, that's a shame. Uh, thanks for sharing that with everyone. It's a VE2HOG, and he's a farmer, so he knows what's going on. Uh, this is the Antars net. Anybody like to check in before I have to check? So I know if you were to flip back over to like your 101 or something like that, if you had an older HF radio, the, the noise and the background noise would sound totally different. I have contesters that tell me after listening to 
a 48 hour contest, even like CQWPX last weekend that they do not have a, the contest or headache. And I would have to agree. So I don't know, funny thing happened there. I took my sweater off and I guess it's pretty dry in my house. And then my headphones just went berserk with the static noise. It was just charging off my body. And I actually had to grab a feed line here to, to ground myself out to make it go away. It was pretty funny. See if this changes screens correctly. There we go. So SDR overload. So there are stories in, uh, about uh, SDR radios not working very well in crowded conditions. I, I've never heard it. I've, I've heard people say the math shows that, but we've actually proven the math doesn't support it at all. But other uh, companies tend to use that as a discussion point of, uh, of uh, you know, they're, it just it's just never going to work. And this is part of the reason that uh, some of our SDR competitive radios uh, have done a hybrid uh, of... Uh, of super head type design and software design or uh, SDR type design. And the problem with doing a, a super head is super head is a collection of mixers. So we keep down mixing from the VFO to maybe a first I to a second IF and maybe to a first IF. And every time you have a mixer, you induce noise. And this is why we keep going to direct sampling radios now for the future. So um, let me make sure we talked about that all right so a bit of a tour a bit of the radio of the number of the radios so all the radios do pretty much the same thing they all have an amazing contest grade receiver and if you were ever to follow rob sherwood's notes online uh if you look really closely at not just one field but the top 20 or 35 radios they're all amazing radios there's nothing wrong with them they all perform admirably um all our radios have a tool called SmartLink included, and SmartLink is the ability to connect to your radio remotely very easily, very simply, and uh, for the most part without any issue, although for the last two weeks we've been dealing with a, uh, an incredible software problem, but we've got it all resolved, and that should be resolved for the rest of our customer base by tonight or tomorrow when we roll the software fixes it. Uh, we can have You can have many different clients, or two different clients rather, connect to the radio directly. So you could have a, uh, a couple of users use the same radio. We have a number of clubs doing this. Very popular if you have somebody who's a shut-in and you've and they can connect by their iPad to your radio either while you're there or not there and still just function with it. It's like a web page for two users. You can have multiple people reading a web page or looking at pictures. Well, you got multiple people using your radio at the same time. One cool feature is something uh, for the technically inclined, if you want to go look at it, is controlled envelope single sideband. And that essentially almost doubles your RF power out. And it's not that we're actually pushing more RF power out. We're just doing it correctly. And traditional old radi radios with the automatic li limiting control and the RF power section of the back of the radio just do it wrong uh, or could do it better. But the end result, instead of outputting 100 watts, they're really only outputting about 50. Again, not that we're creating 100, it's just now the reference has changed. So, uh, and that's called controlled envelope single sideband. You can you can search for that online, uh, CESSB and ARRL, and there's a QEX white paper that comes up with the entire description of how it works by David Hirschberger, who is the author of it. Pretty genius, actually. Uh, we did that. So let's talk a little bit about the radios we have. The 6400 series, we have a 6600 series, and we have a 6700. The 6400 series has one spectral capture unit, means you can only use one antenna at a time, has two slices or two virtual receivers, two receivers. Then the M model gives you a, a control head uh, or you know a display for the radio. You can sit that down on a desk. You can hook up an antenna. You can hook up a power supply and be on the air. You don't need to hook up a computer or have it connected to the internet. And you can take it out to a picnic table if you like. So that's the uh, 6400 and the 6400M. The 6600M and the 6600 have two spectral capture units. That means that you can uh, connect to two different antennas at the same time. It behaves a lot like two unique radios. Contesters love this because they can turn on single operator two radio if they like which is the ability to be on two bands at the same time because you just weren't, you were just bored enough that you wanted to make your workloads uh, a little more or you wanted to increase your score. And long-term contesters really love this because they could be 
uh, you know, at three in the morning, things are slowing down, still finding new multipliers while maintaining a regular contact rate. It's got nice big bandpass filters in it. Uh, the 6400 had bandpass filters as well, which is handy. And again, we have the, uh, the M model for the front panel. You can take a 6600M and add two transverters and use it on satellite work. I do all the time. Uh, and I have SAT PC32 running it. It works incredibly well. The 6700 has been out for some time, but it's still an incredibly popular radio. And we still sell them today, and we sell a lot of them into the U.S. government. It's got eight slices, unlike the 6600, which had four. And uh, it's got some bandpass filters, not quite as good as the 6600, but pretty good bandpass filters. And still very popular radio. Again, as I said, uh, we saw a lot in this commercial world as well. Okay, the Maestro. Maestro is not a small device. Uh, it's about this big. And it's a, got a big 8-inch display on it. And I don't know how well you can see mine sitting here. I actually have mine on an arm. But uh, there it is right now. Uh, to give you an idea, there's my hand on the display. Uh, it's got all the knobs I want from volume controls to bandpass filters, to big VFO knobs, and any other things, I, in depth menus, I could just touch a button and, and go to and get a very well organized menu here, which is uh, quite nice um, for uh, poking around or making adjustments to stuff. Okay, hopefully I don't make too many people sick. So that's the Maestro. And it's got all the station things we plug into the back of the radio are also on the back of the Maestro. From other than the antenna, from headphones to microphones to push to talk switches uh etc just a whole bunch of cool things uh line in line out uh, what else we got powered speakers wi-fi if you want to use wi-fi or you can plug it directly into a LAN connection new thing we have is the power genius or sorry the tuner genius xl it's a big powerful tuner 10 to 1 swr or better full legal limit uh, and everything connects and our stuff connects, by the way, on a LAN. No special interface cables. Now, the Tuner Genius will also talk to most ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu Elecraft radios as well. And it will support two radios at the same time. Again, that's designed to model after our 6600. But works incredibly well with the 6400. And maybe I have a ICOM 7300. You could have it connected through to the same tuner at the same time. Also comes in a one by three model, meaning instead of an SO2R output, which means you're receiving and transmitting possibly at the same time, the one by three means it's got a one by three antenna switch included. Uh, matching this is the Tuner Genius. Uh, sorry, I did that. I've got them both backwards. The Power Genius. Uh, Power Genius is a legal limit amplifier. Um, probably more. What's the legal limit? It's only 400 watts the legal limit in the UK. Probably more power than you'll ever use. We probably won't sell a lot of them into the UK, but uh, very uh, no other amplifier like it. The one cool thing, there was a couple of cool things this does, but the Power Genius has something called a harmonic uh, load, uh, dummy load. And what it does is when we amplify a signal, if you take a 14 megahertz signal and you amplify it, you're going to have a harmonic at 28, another one at 56, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't want those to go at the antenna. So every HF amplifier or any amplifier, in fact, has a low pass filter to make sure that energy does not make it out the door or through to the antenna. So what happens to that energy? Well, in every other amplifier, it gets reflected and then ultimately turns into heat and possibly even additional distortion on your transmitted signal because it goes all the way back to the power amplifier and affects it. And the power genius, we actually have a high pass filter that grabs that reflected energy and sends it to a dummy load. This results in a much cleaner transmitted signal. Again, you can have two exciters hooked up to it uh, from different OEM vendors, same as the tuner genius. Uh, flex control knob, you know, we sell a lot of these. And this is if you're a, a Windows PC user, but you still want that knob feel, you can have this nice big flex control knob on your desk that allows you to uh, do, uh, you can program those three buttons as well. You can uh, use as a big knob for just dialing up and down the bands. 
Now, if you've ever tried to integrate a station for any other radio you have today, you've only been able to do one thing easily. Maybe have my amplifier track my frequency or my bandpass filters or my tuner or whatever, because there's only one of those. And this is the next part where we have a lot of stuff that can do all that at the same time. We have hardware you can plug right in the back of the radio. These are nothing special. These are off the shelf uh, RS-232 to USB devices that are the FTDI chipset. You can plug as many as these back in, into the back of the radio as you like uh, to do whatever you'd like to do. And you can have it track an antenna port saying whatever frequency this antenna port's on, I want to tell something. Or whatever frequency my VFO's on, I want to tell something. Or if I want a light to go on and off that says on the air every time I'm on, a, you know, I hit my foot switch or the radio goes into transmit, you can hook it up here. Pretty cool. Uh, let me see. What's the next slide? SO2R, I mentioned that. If you're not familiar with that, it's where we double up everything. We have two radios, two amplifiers, two tuners, two bandpass filters, two of everything, and the bill goes up. You know, it costs a lot of money. Uh, pretty complicated, and I'll show you a diagram in a minute as to why, uh, how we help with that, for that world. We use the LAN to connect, we, to the, for the radios to connect around. Uh, to other external devices. We can still use RS-232, but we do use the LAN. And uh, this uh, picture from uh, Sierra Echo 3 X-Ray gives you an idea of what his net SO2R setup was. So you got two radios, three PCs, a couple of bandpass filters, uh, a station master, some, or, you know, or whatever the equivalent was from FFJ. So a lot of hardware. You had to wire this all together. And when it all works, it's awesome. You push a button, everything goes click here or goes there. And that's part of the fun for some of us. But for others, it's, I just want it to work. So he replaced all that. And by the way, I, his name's Jan. And I actually emailed him a couple of weeks ago. And I said, are you still using this? And he goes, no, I replaced it. And this is, you know, this is what his station mostly looks like. On the next slide, I said, do you have a current diagram? He goes, no, it's so simple. I didn't need a current diagram, but essentially replaced it all with this. Two RF cables, five LAN cables. And the top right, the antenna switch on the top right allows any one of his eight antennas to be seen by the, any of the other two um, radios. In this case, it's a 6600, which is like having two radios on your desk. So this results in such a nice, clean setup, less chance for RFI issues, easy to migrate or move. And uh, we have actually a lot of customers doing this today. Multiflex uh, is the ability for, as I mentioned, multiple people to connect to your radio at the same time. So two of you can share a radio. Uh, we have clubs doing this. Uh, we can have, and it doesn't really matter what the client is, what the user interface is. And uh, they just uh, fight over the transmitter. So considering a lot of us listen only at times, that's not so bad. I wanted to show you the uh, interface screen for the RS-232 people for you digital people. Uh, this runs on the PC and that, that control panel allows you to have multiple programs actually connect to the radio at the same time and stay beautifully in sync. Uh, so if my log, if my radio changes to a different band, my logbook changes to a different band, uh, maybe N1MM or my uh, packet cluster, DX cluster tracking software changes its focus, whatever, all works wonderfully. And you can have as many ports as you like. Same thing for the digital audio exchange. This again runs on the PC. It comes with smart SDR and allows us to share sound devices among multiple different programs. The RTTY contester people love this because they'll run multiple decoders at the same time with no problem at all. We have a number of uh, plug-in programs that allow you to also connect to the radio. These are written by other hams uh, from Slice Master, which allows the easy configuration of Smart SDR to WSJT. Uh, FL Digi, which if you're on HF, you're probably aware of. These all talk directly to the radio. 
over the LAN again. No signal link or any extra boxes required. And that's as complicated as the network needs to be. Your your you know the, in today's world the LAN the home networks is as important to the ham operation as uh, your antennas. And I want show of hands and there's no voting panel, but how many of you do not have any internet in your ham shack? I know some that don't, but it's a small list. We now use it for DX spotting clusters or to check a whole pile of things or even bring up schematics. I like showing this picture of uh, um, uh, uh, SWR plotter 6K. I use it to plot my six meter antenna or my six meter, my 160 antenna as the ground freezes here in Ontario. The resonance goes up as the ground losses change. So every month I plot it and I can actually see it change and then know when I need to go adjust the length of a few things. That's just one of many, many programs. And we are available online. Uh, and we have a great Facebook page. We have a great community uh, where people could share things and, and problems and questions and configurations. We actually answer the phone and we have a ton of videos on our YouTube channel uh, at Flex Radio Systems. And uh, Nick, I'll send you a PDF of this presentation. You can distribute to everybody and you can then just go click on the links. You can actually get us on the phone, uh, believe it or not, and or email. And if you're thinking of purchasing a radio, um, I should have taken this out, so I apologize for that. It was last a US presentation, but uh, um, because we're, this is only designed for, the coupon stuff only works for the US. It's a whole different world when I'm shipping to different countries because they all, have to deal with uh, duties and customs and their landed cost is significantly higher. Uh, last couple of things. Our license software licenses don't expire. You never have to buy one. Uh, if you we do a major software update, yes, you do have to buy them, but it's optional. Uh, you don't have to be a computer engineer to use the software or the radio. It's, we'd like to have made it fairly intuitive. I think we've done a reasonably good job. Uh, there are um, no SDRF overload issues. You could do even do CW remotely, and everything's made um, uh, onshore. It says offshore. Obviously, that's a typo, and nobody's caught that, so we'll fix that before I send it. And I think that's it. If we have any questions, uh, feel free to bring them up. And Brilliant, I'll... lovely. Thank you, Mike. It's very good. Um, I've got so uh, one question came up on the chat. Um, how wide can the slices be? For receiving? Yeah. 10 kilohertz. And transmitting. Okay. So so if you're uh, an ESSB sideband person, um, you can do it up to 10K. What? I think it's 10. I've, rece no, I've never been asked for receiving, so. I got to go fix that slide now before I forget. <laughs> okay anyone uh, anyone with a question or comment to to mike yeah darren yeah, sorry i'm unmuted now uh, i wasn't actually asking a question but i will do since you brought me and i was just moving the screen uh mike is there any um uh, thoughts on using uh, v i'm going to do vhf with the flex system or is it a case of using purely transverters um, so that's a very common question and it's always on our table. Uh, it comes down to economics. Can we design, build and sell enough of them to pay for the designing and building and the post sales support? And that's the big unknown. The, in the same box of the HF. That, yeah, we, that's also a possibility as well. It's uh, something we're always considering. So nothing I could say yay or nay. It's not the first time we've heard it and it's part of serious discussion. So I think we'd love to do it. We just need to make sure we can, we can, it can, that part of the project can fund itself. You know, we have a, our chief operating officer is not a ham. It's about the business and it's a good thing. That's what keeps us going. He's a great guy too. His name's Fred. So thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Um, any other questions or comments to, to Mike? Yeah, Terry. Uh, okay, but Dave had his hand up uh, just now. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. okay. You go. You go. And then we'll okay, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, that, that that was very good. Lovely. Um, you mentioned filters uh, in um, one uh, one 
6700 and a 6600 i think band pass one, filters yes uh one was um 55 db you quoted and the other was 30 db uh i just wonder why the difference um uh, old the older radios have the 30 db filters the 55 was in the middle i think of and the, the 6600 uh, has the higher the better built filters and the 67 uh 30 db it was an like older 30. designed radio okay right okay and uh so that's just for uh multiple radios on one site yes yeah that's bandpass so that's to protect 80 from 40 or 40 from 20 yeah, yeah. type of thing okay thank you okay thank okay. you sorry yeah dave can you dave. give me a second nick i've got a courier at my door and he's ringing my phone okay all right <laughs> pause for a second everyone uh David, you're up next. I'll set my hand down then. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe Hermes did it this time of night, can you? <laughs> That'll be broken, whatever it is. If it's coming by Hermes, you know what their diamonds are like. Yeah, we'll drop kick them over the fence normally. Have you seen the video? Which one? <laughs> exactly. Which one? There's loads of them. <laughs> What he didn't say was that it's a whole month's delivery. Wow, he was tenacious. <laughs> I've never had a courier phone me. I could see them on the on the Nest doorbell, but it was like it's like this, and I'd see the phone ring. And anyway, any other questions? Yeah, we've got, uh, David. Sure. It was myself that asked about the uh, about the slices there, Mike. Um, I currently use um, an SDR receiver connected and to my main radio as a, um, sort of a, a second receiver and to use as like a, a scope to get a scope for click and tune and all those sort of things. And I have had to play with one of the older flex uh, radios, but none of the new stuff. When you were saying about the slices, you're saying there were 10K. When I'm using an RSP, I can set it to the whole band. Well, you said receive, so I meant just the RX bandpass. Uh, the a slice will see about eight megahertz. Right. Okay. Right. Because if I was wanting to, if I was wanting to use a flex, then as SO2R, I could virtually see that I could see the whole of 20 meters and the whole of 40 meters if I wanted. Right. Yep. Then, you could also just... be even on a single band, a single SCU radio, you could also be on 160 and six at the same time. Right. Okay, okay. So you don't have to be within, you know, plus or minus, you know, within eight megahertz of your yeah, operating sure. frequency, you could be anywhere. Uh, and see right now, you see you're taking the IF out before the roofing filters. Uh, I come on, on the your... RX out so that I use it on my radio. It's got, I'm on a DX3000. So it's got an RX out, so it's not the IF out. So I don't, I'm not restricted by that eight meg. Oh, it's just split off the antenna on a preamp. So it's just right? an antenna yeah, taken okay. out, so I can I can be anywhere else on the spectrum if I want. I choose to keep it on the same as my BFO. Um, got it. Yep. Yeah. No. Be anywhere. That's else. a good. That's a good. That's not a bad setup. That uh, that makes it very easy rather than having to tap an IF out. So that's good. Yeah, I think I've got the best of both worlds with it for the price because it was. I've had a look at the price. They are superb. And if I was starting now, I would probably be leaning towards SDR because I'm a big data operator. Um, but at the time, I wasn't. So I went a different That's path. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. We get it. That's, that's, we... Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Good choice. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Mike. Right. Any other questions to, to Mike? Yeah, Bob. Uh, Jim, thank you. Thank yeah, thanks. Uh, Mike, I, I assume that the smart SDR software is proprietary. It's not open source. Is that correct? Yeah, there's so much intellectual property in there now that uh, we learned our lesson from Power SDR. It actually almost killed us that uh, we made that open source um, because others benefited from the what was put into writing that. 
it's sort of it's 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 okay if it's crowdsourced you're not trying to make money on it you know for something like we see with hdsdr or all the other things and uh but you know when you've got manufacturing costs then it's a whole different world thank you so. yeah darren again yeah yeah i'm all right in saying that the the older flex radios i have a, a 3000 are only still uh available to use with the, the power sdr correct yeah are you using uh, Darren's Power SDR? I'm using K9. Yeah. Or K9 yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's him. Yeah, they've done a lot of work on the, I call it the the, the look, the creature comforts of it. Uh, they haven't touched any of the RF work under the cover in a long time. Yeah. We stopped working on that about 2011, but still a great radio. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I still enjoy using it. I do use it more for data these days. Um, I, but I, it's I, I like it. I, I if I was as David said, if we're starting again, uh, if I was upgrading again now, I, I would be looking at the uh 66. You know, I thought I saw, I'm pretty sure I saw somebody had found a Thunderbolt to Firewire adapter, which is which has breathed no life into that radio so that Power SDR mm -hmm. can still see it as on newer computers. I didn't confirm it, but you know might allow you to eventually upgrade to something newer that doesn't have any firewire support. Yeah, that's the one. I've just upgraded the computer because I had to get the firewire card uh, into the new computer, which uh, is it, always, um, you, you always feel like you're sort of introducing old technology into a new system. We've actually told people to order all the different models they can find on Amazon, keep the one that works and send the rest back. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> anything else yeah. thank you darren thanks mike right anyone else with a, a question or comment to uh to mike i don't see you immediately do shout i'm looking at a couple of screens here no if not uh mike can i th i know you've got a you're right. oh kevin go on now you come in quickly because we've got a few minutes left you need to unmute oh you would <laughs> i think kevin's beating me to it mike uh, sorry, was waving your hand. Um, I, I was just going to thank you, but I'm conscious of your no, deadline right. for. A... I'm coming in, uh, Darren. No, um, go on, Kevin. Dick. Go on. Far away, Kevin. I want to be cheeky and ask him if there are any any free samples. <laughs> we lost. We lost the question. Oh, sorry. I'm just being very cheeky and asking if there are, there are any free samples. <laughs> no, uh, you'll have to check with uh, um, Walters and um, I can't think of the last name at the moment. Walters and Stanton. Thank you. Yeah. No, no I don't just... want to get them in trouble. I don't want you to go to them and say, hey, Mike said, don't do that. It gets me in trouble. So <laughs> we actually want to get I over there once the borders open. We actually really want to get over there and do a live presentation. But, you know, we're probably still another whole year away from that. So. OK, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, good try. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Mike, uh, can I thank you very much indeed for uh, for coming along and giving us the introduction. Um, I know that it's something that people have talked about I've, amongst ourselves. We have got a range of different radios, um, and um, you know we've all seen the Flex radio. I, I guess uh, I'm not going to offend you by saying this. The only thing that slightly puts us off, of course, when we look at the price level of the the new Flex radio, is it's it's an expensive piece of kit, isn't it? Yeah, I, it is absolutely. I mean, I have the same problem here in Canada, uh, and I try not to think of it in U.S. and Canadian dollars, but I still have to pay thirteen percent to get it over the border, uh, plus brokerage and stuff. So it adds up. Uh, I'd like to think that you, the but had you bought a sixty three hundred ten years ago, it's still current. You know, you wouldn't have down. You know, had to deal with that. But it's um, it's just the economics of it. I hate to say. Yeah, no, I, we. I think we all get that. Mike, uh, can can, we, can I just say thank you to uh, to coming along, giving us the time uh, this evening to talk to the club? Can we show our appreciation to Mike in the normal way, guys? Thank you very much. 
Yeah, I didn't see too many people sleeping, so I did okay. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Okay, take care. Okay, cheers, Mike. Enjoy the rest right. of the afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah.